prison spell, and I mean, it ended up in Broadmoor, which was horrendous, wasn't it? When you yeah, well, it wasn't very nice there, yeah, but uh, you know, you you cut off the outside world. That's the inside's your life. So, uh, and I've got so much solitary confinement. Uh, you know, it, it didn't mean I was I was in my own company. I used to do all, all press ups, sit ups, and uh, things like keep myself fit while I was in there anyway. And, and what is Broadmoor like? Well, the only thing is, it's easy. You can do what you like, and you get people coming. They um, leave money for you, thing, and that goes into your canteen. You can buy what you like. You can eat what you like. It's, you know, the food is good. And one thing I can say about it, they've done a television show, and they asked me to do it. I said, but no, I've got nothing bad to say about Broadmoor. And they, um, there was geese on there saying, yeah, they beat me up. They've done this. Well, that is all lies. They, um, I mean, I, I went to them, them screws what I've done. When I was over there, and uh, they never, never, all they'd done was give me injections and push me in the cell. No, no beatings or nothing like that, you know. Could, uh, could you tell us about when you were having the injections and you were hallucinating? Was one of the injections when, when they sort of going through your cheek into your no, brain? No, no, yeah, it goes up there. That was a. They wanted to find out, you know, what, what was wrong with me because I was just kept attacking the. Uh, did I, I told you about the. Um, yeah, oh no, I haven't told you the story, have I? No, no. No, no well, in the morning, going into the, the, the morning, you have your breakfast, and there's, there's this geezer in there, I'm a liberty taker, he's a nut, but he keeps getting in front of me, going, <laughs> and he press up, <laughs> you know, making out he's doing exercise to show on front. I mean, if he's a nut, I take no notice, have a shake, and whatever. Then one day, I, after breakfast, I always go to a toilet, and I got three toilets in, and I got a gap under the door so you can see the, the feet. So um, anyway, I'm in, the, I'm in on the toilet. It's on the door opens. He says, "You can see I'm in here, can't you?" And he walks around, leaves the door open. I said, "Come shut the blinking door." <laughs> and uh, he come back and started bashing me up. So I pulled my trousers and, and, and I'd done him. So uh, about two hours later, the doctor calls me down and says, "Sure," he said, uh, "What's this attack you've done on this fellow? I forget his name." This fellow went, "He attacked me." He said, well, sure, you said you went over the top, you know, the handle and it. He said, I'm going to send you over the refractory block. I said, you ain't sending me over the refractory block. I said, I ain't done that. I said, he attacked me. So he said, yeah, but you went over the top, boy. So I said, well, I ain't going. I went to go out the office and there there was about eight screws all uh, hanging around. And um, so I said, I ain't going. I whacked, I whacked the cheek and cracked his cheekbone. And I was nutting them and whacking them. And, and it, there's a peak the eye there. And, uh, he was a, like a friend of mine because you know we got on well. We were talking about keeping fit and healthy. And I'm whacking him, and I saw him coming in like that. I could have easily done him, but you know I didn't want to hurt him. So he got me legs, and once your legs got you over, you go. Then they get you around the throat and they cut off the blood to your head, and, and you can't count. And I woke up and they say, "Take it steady, take it steady." You know, with holding my neck. So I think anyway, they took me over to the refractory block. Drug me up, drug me up, drug me up. So later on, I said, I'm going to have every one of you slam me in the cell. And the, the cleaners come by, I said, let me know when any of them geezers, them screws come back on the, on the wing again. You know, all right. And there was someone I was, that was going to give out the um, the tea, it was. And they said, he said, oh, Scotty's on, Scotty's on. All right, it was a little flat nosed uh, screw. And, um, but what I'm trying to say that they never hurt me or nothing like that, you know, they just done me, give me injections. And they come in and I was so doped that I couldn't even stand up. So he had sardines in the look at Tim Play. So I managed to push that in his face. And, and as that fell, all I started, I just threw myself at him and that had him in the, in the face. Over he went. And I, and I couldn't stand up, I couldn't even, couldn't even, I could, when I went to wash, I, I couldn't even hit, hit, I couldn't even get two hands off the thing. That's how doped up I was. And now me in there, uh, all just like, yeah, I wouldn't got in, no, no exercise, no, no, just stuck in there all day. Did, did you feel that, I mean, you were really on the kind of way out at that point? No, it's, um, you just, you just shut off your emotions. You know, I, I had control of my own feelings and everything, you know. Anyway, uh, Joey Paul heard about all the, um, the trouble and he took the chief out for a, a, a meal at the Danny Astor Club and everything. And the chief made friends with a geezer called Sulky, 
who was the manager of the uh, Esther Club. And they, were, they got friends with the Chief and Sulky. So, then, then, so that was before, but now afterwards, the, the Chief knows what was going on with me. And so he got hold of Sulky, he said, you've got to go and see Roy and tell him to, to cut it out. Well, you don't even get um, the, uh, what do I call them? Nobody, nobody comes down to the dungeons. The only people who are down in the dungeons are the nut, nut, nut. No visit magistrates, nobody. It's the nut, nut, nuts are down there. And I was there. <laughs> and, uh, and I was the name done. It was on 10 o'clock at night, the door opens. And it's sulky stand on. Jesus Christ. Roy, 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 he said, Tell the doctor not to do the screws no more. Uh, they're going to kill you, Roy, they're going to kill you. So what do you mean? He said, no. Well, they're going to kill you. Tell the doctor not to do the screws no more. Well, all right, mate. All right. And he, he went, he left. And it was poor, about six weeks later, he died. You know, so... Anyway, I saw the doctor in the morning. I said, all that vendetta against it and the screws and that. I said, uh, you know, let's call it owner. All I want to do is be time and get out. He said, oh, well, how do you think that way, Roy? He said, go back to your cell and we'll see um, how things go. So I went out to cell next morning. When you there's one of the screws out, come on in, morning. Never heard of them, so let me out on the, uh, you know, in the wing again. And, uh, they didn't give me what they call a parole, you know, so I could walk about all over the prison by myself. But I wasn't a liberty to say it, you know. And, and, and Joe, didn't he, did he bring Joe Lewis to see you? Yeah, Joe, yeah, Joe Lewis came to see me, yeah. Joe, Joey Powell brought him down there for me. And uh, he, he got on the stage, showed six of his films and said, uh, I want to visit with Roy. And so, they, yeah, I had a visit with him. All the schools said, get an autograph, get an autograph. And then uh, then he brought Terry Downs in. He's done exactly the same sort of thing. He was only a young kid. Uh, he was doing screws, and that's why they sent him to uh, to, to Broadmoor. They, 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 he, was, he was in there for quite a few years, but they thought, all right, we'll, uh, we'll send him back to um, to prison. So they sent him back to prison, but then he he, he done um, no, to a mental home they sent him, and he'd done one of the nurses there, killed him. So he come back, and he said, oh, I'll never get out. I was in the refractory block where I was still. And he said, oh, I'm, ne I'm never going to get out. He said, uh, you know, will, will you kill me? And, and what they do, you know, I saw it in Broome when they, they put their arm around the thing, me, cut off the blood to your thing, me, to your head, but then I let it go, so, you, you know, you come conscious again. But if you hold it there, that's it, um, you, you know, you die. In this case, it's called Reeves, this other one who's done it. And now that one's nearly coming to me. Anyway, so he asked me, I said, no, I won't do it. And he says, you use your loaf in here, ping me. I said, uh, they, you know, they send you back to a, a county hospital. You know, you, you, you've you got to do a good while, but it won't be all that long. But he was only young. And then we asked this kid called Reeves, would he do it? He was another bit of a nutter in there. And the way he took him to the toilet and he'd done it. And uh, Doyle, that was his name, that was his name, Billy Doyle. And and also, I mean, there was quite interesting characters in the moment, like the, um, was it the poisoner, Graham Young, was he? In yeah, 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 yeah. He was, a, believe it or not, he was a, a right nice, nice fella. But um, educated, you know, I wouldn't say, well, he must have been mad with what he'd done, but uh, he, he wouldn't believe it. And I, he was like a pal of mine because uh, he was only like the same one, you know, same ones in there, and uh, but he, he was such a easy going thing. The, the screws that in in the on this floor that we was on in block seven made him their uh, their orderly. So he, they was making them see and, and getting things like that ready for him. But I've been out of them. <laughs> there were screws going off ill because he, he could get dandelions and anything from the, from out in the garden and mince it up and make it into a concoction. You know that would do you. Do you? And that's what he was doing, and he was slowly doing the screws. So that's when they, they sent him from there over to the refractory blocks, and, and that's where I met him. And, you know, we, we got on you know, really, really well. But he used to get a visit, and he'd come back and say, Hello, Roy, said, look, my mum's been some lovely cake. Would you want to start? I said, no, I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> I wouldn't say it had a chance. And then he'd come back, and he'd have a big tea uh, uh, or a coffee on at the end of the wing, and it'd say 10 o'clock, between 10 and 11, you can go and have a, you know, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. I'll get your tea, Roy. No, I'm all right, get me own. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no way. Because when he got out, they sent him to prison, he was trying to uh, do him again in, in the prison, wasn't he? 
Is it true he tried to poison his own family? That's what that's what he done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he's called his stepfather or something like that. Killed him all. Yeah. Because did, didn't you go to like a sort of psychiatric thing where they all had to talk about themselves? Oh, that was like in Glen and Underwood. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I was what they call group, group therapy. <laughs> so sitting there in front of the doctor, and he says, uh, "And I come on, anybody want to get anything off their chest? You know, speak up now. This is the time to have these, you know, these meetings for." And this kid went, put his hand, he said, "Yes." He said, uh, "What's that?" It's brown. He said, "What was it?" He said, "But I like to say it off my chest, sir. Um, I had a relationship with a dog." So I went, uh, "What dog was it?" He went, "An illustration." So I was a good looking dog, and uh, now the, school, the, the doctor went, sure, I bump. So they banned me from the, the uh, sitting down. Anyway, I'm been out to me, there was so many not nonsense and everything in, in Grendon, I didn't know um, many disturbed cases. I, I was, I'd have never gone there. You know, I'd done me night in there and uh, had a few rows, and uh, they said you've got to go to uh, Broadmoor. Do you think any of that stuff does any good? What? You know, that sort of talking about Do, stuff. For, no, I, I can't see it doing anything any good now. No, it didn't, didn't work for you? No, no, nothing wrong with me, was I? I was, I was, I was the only same one in there. He was an ex-boxer. I can't think of his name now. He was an ex-boxer, so we had a lot in, in common. And he was what they called a staff nurse up there, so I got on well with him. And uh, he got me the jobs on the garden. You know, he, he looked hard at me and all. And uh, so... I, I said, can I have a look at my record? He said, yeah, well, I can get them for you. He said, but you'll have to go in the cell out the way. I said, all right. So give me a record and I'll read them. I couldn't believe it. You know, the, the different schools, and I said, a sure attacked me. It was like an animal. And if it hadn't been for my compatriots pulling him off, he said, he'd have killed me. And it went on and on. And it was all in red thing. I mean, the thing is there. Like, Jesus Christ. You know, it was one after the other, one after. Then all of a sudden, it, when I was at Grand and but he, this doctor there is the top doctor of all the psychiatrists' prisons, you know, he, he's, he was the top man. And he had his finger there, he said, Shaw is the most powerful and dangerous man I've ever attempted to treat. And hence, he's moved to, to Broadmoor. So I, and I thought, Jesus Christ, you know what? What, what was it like reading all that stuff? Did, did you recognise yourself? No, no, bloody hell, you know, it seemed like they exaggerated everything, you know. But were, I mean, but there were, was there it was surprising the amount of incidents that there were? Yeah, the, the, you know, it was all true, that no one told no lies. But no, they may not have made it so bad, if it hadn't been for my compadre, she would have killed me. Well, I wonder if I whack someone, they go over, that's it, I don't know. Uh, I don't jump on them or anything like that, oh. except Donny Adams. <laughs> <laughs> did we do Albert Rainbird? Did we, did we, we haven't just, done no, no. no, because he, he was um, wasn't he originally a friend of yours? He was a, he was a close pal of mine. You know when when I said we got done on the um, the bakery for yes. twenty nine months ago for you know older minute. Well, he he, he was the one with me. Oh. Yeah. And and so what? Why did did he just change in character or something, or so did he become a grass? Or yeah, that, well, that's it. He become a grass. Yeah. Uh, and and so, and so then then he got a small. I was in um, Pentonville. I was finishing off me uh, me three years. I went to a uh, uh, when I done three years. I went from there to Mason. From Mason for a while, went through the door from there. I went from there to Canterbury, Canterbury to the Ville, and then he came in um, there. So I know he made friends. Uh, you know, got it was on a same wing. So I walked around. I said, I got to do him, and I didn't have no. No tool, so I had a little bulleting bottle, you know, got you, so I busted it, and it couldn't have busted, probably busted like, like a, then all round like, like, like a knife. So there was, um, uh, God, uh, he's one of the, he's one of, he's, he's, he was one of the people who grasped the, uh, the twins up, um, I can't think of his bloody name. Is it Donoghue? Or? Donoghue, you got yeah. it, yeah. 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 Donoghue. So Donoghue was there, so I thought, I said, I'm going to walk around and I'm going to do the skis. I'm going to be behind her, we're behind her. So that was behind me and uh, walking around and thinking, and I was going to wait till we get by the toilet, sort out the way, the screws and that, and then do it. But before we got to there, they went, it started to rain, and I went, all right, in you come, in you come. So Donoghue says, all right, Ryan, another day, and I went, no, no, I ain't. So as we're going in, I went into the wing, 
got him by the thing, ripped it round his throat, and he went, ah, oh, and he started going, ah, oh, shouting, so I, I whacked him, so he went over, and then I went back to me, um, went back to my cell, but he, 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 uh, he grasped me up here, told, told it was me, so the police come round, and um, interview with me, and uh, said, right, yeah, uh, oh yeah, no, when, I knew the police, the police was out and that, uh, got out to go to court. So uh, my mate, uh, Dickie Sullivan, come up to see me. And I said, when he visited me, he kept saying, I am Detective Sergeant Smith. It wasn't Smith, it was another name, but I can't think of it. I'm Detective Sergeant Smith, and I'm from Caledonian Road Police Station. So I said, I am Detective Sergeant Smith, and I come from Caledonian Road Police Station. All right. I am Detective Sergeant Smith. All right, all right. So I told him, I said, he keeps saying, I said, get in touch with him. Anyway, we gave him 300 pounds and they dropped the charges. Did, did you have any, I mean, was that weird, the fact that he had been a friend of yours and suddenly he changed? Did that yeah. make it no. harder for you or didn't no difference at all? No, you know, he turned a mongrel, didn't he? He turned a grass, he was grassing his own friends up.